On the winding canals and narrow streets of Venice, perhaps history's most enigmatic figure once flourished. His writings have given scholars a window into 18th century life and given the world the challenge of envisioning a man with innumerable masks. A man renowned for his tales of love affairs, gambling escapades, and acts of espionage long past. Giacomo Casanova still sparks the curiosity of audiences today. In 1960, sparks turned to flame as previous sections of Casanova's autobiography, Histoire d'Amivie, were uncovered and published. Since then, speculation and doubt have grown against Casanova's sincerity in recounting his own history. Many claim that Casanova's work is pure fiction, while others assert his honesty. Of particular controversy is Casanova's self-reported family tree. While Casanova stressed his European ancestry, rumors have circulated for hundreds of years that his biological roots may have Armenian origins. Only recently, however, have clues been unearthed that may change history. Could Casanova be Armenian? If so, why lie in personal writings about his own ethnicity? Is the Casanova found in his memoirs genuine or simply another one of his many masks? The answers are hidden deep in the streets and canals of Venice. entertain the idea that Casanova could be Armenian, there would need to be a connection between the Armenian community and the Republic of Venice prior to Casanova's birth in 1725. There were so many Armenians, there was a huge population of Armenians in Venice. Somewhere back in, in his lineage, it's, it's easily conceivable that there was an Armenian. But the nature of things in Venice, in Italy, and, and in so many countries is to discount those little quirks and just go with the, uh, the norm. And if you were in, in Venice, it was very important that you were Venetian. A fading footprint of the Armenian presence in Venice can be seen in one of the city's most iconic locations. Engraved in the pillars outside St. Mark's Basilica, are the Armenian letters left there by merchants and pilgrims of the 15th and 16th centuries. Venice had always been a, the most important commercial center in the Mediterranean. Uh, it was a city that always lived on business. Uh, Venetians were very open-minded, uh, and uh, people came from all over to find something in Venice. Armenia was well located on the, along the Silk Road. The, community there was Christian, which made it a much more accessible, comfortable community to have ties with if you were trading. The Armenians have always been known as linguists. They were able to, to act as go-betweens with the Europeans and the, and the Eastern traders that they were trying to do business with. The Armenian commerce was the only positive thing for the Venetian economy, and so the Armenians contributed highly to the Republic of Venice in those difficult days. Despite this formidable economic power, Armenians, like other foreigners, were still denied certain privileges, such as owning a home. Instead, Armenian families would rent, forming communities within the city itself. Behind that bridge, we have Ruga Juf. Uh, in Venetian language, uh, Ruga means uh, very tiny street. Uh, and Jufa is the Venetian deformation of Julfa, uh, an Armenian city. So because of that, uh, we can easily understand that, that in that street, uh, we had uh, the highest concentration of Armenian population in Venice. Even if Casanova had been born on Ruga Jufa, his own name raises further questions. Had Casanova been an Armenian, wouldn't he have had a clear Armenian lineage and a distinct Armenian surname? Well, we've had the change of names and hiding their ethnic background 
for as long as Armenians have existed on the face of the earth. At that time, uh, we had very rich people, noblemen, and poor people. Casanova always uh, grew up with an appetite uh, that was to succeed, to uh, can grow up uh, the stairway uh, to, to another uh, class of society. And that's why he tried anything to climb that uh, social stairway. If you ask people who are Armenians, are they Americans? They would of course all say yes. And Casanova was a Venetian. That was his nationality. I'll bet if they had passports in those days, everybody who lived in Venice wanted to be a Venetian because it was a world-class state, Venice was. So you wanted to be a Venetian, just like in previous decades and centuries, you wanted to be a Roman. That sense of being Venetian, I think, went back into the, the 17th century, if not even earlier. You had to be Venetian really be Venetian. No outsiders. Outsiders might be tolerated, but if you really wanted to operate, you had to be from Venice. Venice was, in many ways, a very tolerant and modern city. It had a, it was a republic. It had a, a system of electing its doge. It was also very confined, and confining in, in the sense that you had to be a certain kind of Venetian to be in the electorate pool, and you had to really be Venetian. In 15th century, 16th century, the Armenians changed their name in Venice in order to get privileges as the sale of real estate was forbidden by a Venetian law. So Armenians, as far as Armenians wanted to buy houses, not only to rent houses, but to buy houses for themselves, they just Italianized their surnames in order to get privileges. Either they changed it phonetically or they adapted it with a new Italian word corresponding more or less to their, for instance, Karakashian, which is with dark eyebrows, became Ritzi, which means almost the same thing. So Noratunkian also, which means a new home, new house, uh, changed it to Casanova according to Father Alishan's witness. And going ahead, we see the complete list of Armenians who lived in those centuries, and we see how they changed their surnames. So we see Adamian, Adami, Azat, Ajati, Aslan, Leoni, and Yerijanen, Lauri, Mikhailian, Micheli, and finally on page 502, we see Noratung Casanova from Constantinople, century 18th, and generations for generations. Shadowed in the sanctuary of the Armenian church of Serp Kach, a connection emerges between Alishan's catalogs and historical possibility. From archive documents, we knew that there were family tombs. So when we went there, in fact, we found out multiple tombs, and in one of them, there was literally written that this is the tomb of Noratung, son of Sakar from Istanbul. We see, in fact, that Alishan puts Constantinople as uh, origin of Noratung family. So. We can say for sure that this is the tomb of one of uh, members of Noratung family who afterwards had changed its name into Casanova. We are sure about that. This fact has excited the thirst of some people who rose the question whether Giacomo Casanova could have had drops of Armenian blood. After uh, the 12th century, a lot of Armenians, hundreds of thousands, migrated to Poland. Uh, some estimates go to 500,000 Armenians went to Poland. Where are they now? They're not a single one. They're all in the Polish bloodstream. They've all lost their names. 
But if you go, go to Poland, start checking DNAs and check them with people around uh, who lived around Ani in later years, you'll find, I think, the same DNA. Well, let me give you the example that's demonstrated by this magnificent Venice by Night painting behind me. This is the crown jewel of the Carabian family collection. This was painted by Ivan Konstantinovich Ivazovsky. Now, he was baptized with a different name. His name was Hovanes Ivazian, and his baptism records exist and can be found. He was an Armenian from a pure Armenian family. But I suspect that when he introduced the first painting to the Tsar's court, and was made an official painter of the court of the Tsar, that he probably thought it would be easier to get recognized and accepted if he had a Russian name. This has been one of the motivations that Armenians have changed their names for years. And so Hovhaness Avazian became Ivan Ivazovsky. Aside from accepting the possibility that Casanova might be Armenian by blood and by name, certain factors in his life point to an Armenian background. According to many accounts, including Casanova's own writings, he was commissioned by the Venetian authorities in the early 1770s to spy on two Armenian monks in the port city of Trieste, a city in direct competition with Venice. The Venetian authorities believed that these monks had left the island of San Lazaro in the Venetian lagoon in order to start a printing press in Trieste. Worried for their economic security, the Venetians asked a delegate in Trieste, Marco de Monte, if he would spy on these monks. Having trouble getting close to the monks himself, de Monte asked Casanova to spy on them, and Casanova may have had something in his background to make him ideal for the job. Uh, inquisitors wanted to know why, um, really why, monks were there, because they suspected something. Uh, the Monti uh, couldn't get in touch uh, very deeply with these monks, so he thought that Casanova could get uh, better in touch with these monks, because he knew a person that these monks knew. Who was this mutual acquaintance between Casanova and these Armenian monks? There is no record of a specific name. There is, however, also, you must say also, is that in some passage of this conversation, he says to this person that he knows a man or some person, someone, who knows their language. No, of course, also, this phrase can be interpreted in different ways. This person he knows can be also himself, because this is spy language. This can be an allusion. And it is a suggestion. He knows the person. Later, he will tell, of course, secretly, that that person, it's myself. The question then is begged, would the Doge have sent someone to spy on Armenians who couldn't speak Armenian? It seems as though if you were going to spy on some group that spoke in a strange foreign language, you would pick someone who could speak that language. You have to know the language of those people with whom you have to behave, because otherwise it's not uh, possible. And it is, I think, a support to the hypothesis that Casanova belonged to this Casanova family, which was of Armenian descent. And this hypothesis, this hypothesis, this possibility, even I would say, this great probability that uh, the famous Casanova may belong to this uh, Armenian family of the Nora Duncan, who changed their name. This was a very, very common feature in those times. So, taking into the consideration that we are sure that Casanova was in Trieste and that Casanova in 1770s was engaged in a difficult task of spying Armenians for Venetian government, we can say that Casanova being Armenian is highly probable. You know, it became another uh, pebble in the scale weighing toward Casanova being an Armenian 
that he was sent because of his ability to speak the language of the people the Doge wanted to spy upon. Although never admitted in his writings, could it be possible that Casanova spoke Armenian and kept it quiet? If only those closest to him knew his secret, Marco de Monte would have all the more reason to recruit Casanova as a spy. Perhaps the most glaring opposition to the concept of his potential Armenian heritage is Casanova's own account of his genealogy. In Histoire d'Amivi, Casanova recorded an extensive family tree reaching back to the 1400s. How much of that information is a certainty, as opposed to being yet another of the varied masks? The more we go farther from uh, the period in which Casanova writes, the more uh, there are discrepancies. Uh, the only thing we know uh, comes from Casanova's account, which, as I said, gives information which can be incorrect or incomplete because of the young age uh, this information was given to the little Gaetano or to the little Giacomo. So we don't know anything certain about the farthest genealogy of Casanova, except for what Casanova reported in his account uh, written in his memories. The only thing we know uh, for certainty uh, regards the last two lines uh, before Casanova, so uh, Casanova's grandfather and Casanova's father, and then his family, I mean uh, Giacomo Casanova's family, uh, as regards his brothers and his sisters. So he has to mix together real facts, and then he has to uh, embellish, to fortify some, some events in order to give to posterity uh, an image of what was his century, but even to what was himself. I don't know if his genealogy is real, but it is a, a weapon, a, a narrative strategy, uh, which uh, autobiographers used to, uh, to have in order uh, to, to give a basis for, uh, for their life. Could the previous generation be the Nora Dunkian family of Venice? Could Casanova's father have changed his family's last name in order to simply buy a house? How can a genealogy riddled with so much fiction be trusted? It was a so... Uh, a, a, a peculiar person that I never thought about him as only Italian. I usually uh, think about Casanova as a citizen of Europe. Probably his family had Armenian roots, uh, but maybe he didn't know that very well. And even if he knew that, uh, it was not so important for him. Mm? That was uh, for him uh, in those days uh, a minor detail. Armenians living in Venice were very well tolerated and very successful. At the same time, uh, an Armenian would not have been on the inside circle of Venetian life, of Venetian uh, society. You would only be there if you were Venetian. So I would easily think that uh, someone wanting to excel and advance in the Venetian hierarchy, the Venetian society, might easily put their Armenianness aside in favor of becoming 100% Venetian. Maybe Casanova uh, would have hidden the fact that he was uh, Armenian, or maybe not. We, we won't ever know. Any Armenian that can tie himself up with uh, a famous name thinks that it advances the Armenian cause or, or knowledge about the Armenians. The Armenian people, uh, like other peoples, like to be recognized by the world. They want to be recognized for good things or famous things. And so there's a tendency among the Armenians, I can't speak about other peoples, but about Armenians, to associate themselves with famous names even with notorious characters uh, like Casanova. <laughs>